I could take a pregnancy test. My boobs, significantly bigger, and I have been bloated for two weeks. Uh Uh-oh. I am... Stop it. It's Sophia Franklin. You are listening to Sophia with an S, and the S is for phenomenal. (laughs) Hi, everybody. Welcome to Sophia with an F. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I am here with Brie Tiasi. You are hotter in person. Thank you. Just by the way, (laughs) uh, Brie and I were laughing because... She has not flashed her vagina. Yet. I had my vagina fully hanging out. <laughs> and because I was wearing a skirt with no underwear. I mean, I didn't see it, so I missed out on that. But <laughs> I mean, hey, nobody likes underwear anyways. I mean, true. Well, no one asked to see my vagina. Like at all. I think I'm gonna get an HR complaint <laughs> from the studio. We are recording in WTF Media Studios in Los Angeles. Brie, if you guys don't know her, Brie TSC is a TV star, real estate agent, and hottest person in the world <laughs> with the hottest body, <laughs> with the hottest body in the world. Okay, Brie, I'm so excited to have you. I watched like how many seasons of Selling Sunset have there been? There's six. I was on six. So okay, you were on the six. Me. Yeah. Okay, I haven't watched every season. Don't kill me. I watched the season you were on. That's all that matters. Right? <laughs> Perfect answer. How did that um, happen? Like, how, like, were you trying to be on reality TV? No, I feel like I kept, my nose is so itchy. Excuse me. Do you have I'm allergies? Sne- yes. And I literally, I was sneezing the whole way in here. I was like, oh my God, I can't stop sneezing. Brie, do you want Allegra? <laughs> and do you want to talk about your allergies for the next 45 minutes? I mean, maybe. Can we grab the celebrity in Allegra, please? <laughs> please, thank you. <laughs> you know, she wants a little something I'm else. I'm dying. Just like, no. Thank just you. Just She's like, well, this might be Allegra. It might not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Emily, you're driving me home. <laughs> It's pill roulette. Speaking of allergies, <laughs> Brie, this is really why I brought you uh, here today and why I've been begging to get you on, which, by the way, did you get your makeup done I today? Did. I did. By this infamous makeup artist. Is it the same makeup artist Sweetie has? Yes. And she's like the best of the best. I had her before, sweetie. She stole her from me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love sweetie. Um, but yes, I've been with Evelyn since I was 17 years old. She's literally the first person to ever beat my face and no one's allowed to touch me. 17? I was 17. My first photo shoot, I just got into modeling and I was terrified. And <laughs> she did my makeup and then she helped me with my shoot. And she's literally like a second mom oh, at this point. Yeah. And like, I just love her. And now she's moving to Nashville and <gasps> I'm devastated. I don't know what I'm going to do. You're going to move to Nashville. Basically. <laughs> I'm like, so you're either going to fly back and forth every day or I'm going to have to move. So it's been um, it's been a lot. Yeah. Normally I would never go anywhere without her. Wow. Yeah. So you've never used another makeup artist? Never. Never? No. If I have to like do a brand something and they ask me to, I still say no. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm sorry. I can't. I'd rather pay for it. I'd rather fly her, house her, whatever I have to do. I just look crazy. Do you know how much of an icon? Like, you sound so iconic right now. sound like a crazy person. <laughs> no. I mean, you're, I like, can't. turning down money. You're Mm-mm. turning down brand deal. You're turning down, like, will you, yeah. like, go to an event without your makeup done? No. Mm-mm. And it has to be from her? Yes. So we have a very <laughs> scary next couple of months while I figure this out. Um, I've actually had her, like, training people. So she's been doing, like, makeup that's tutorials. Smart. And then I'm, that's all I can really do at this point. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm either zero or 100. So I'll look completely homeless and insane <laughs> and, like, I haven't slept and brushed my hair. Yeah. Or I have to be, like, completely decked out. There's no between. What's the point of doing – the in between, exactly right. No, I'm like, there's no point. Like <laughs> when I when I see makeup tutorials, um, this is my five minute get ready with me. Mm-mm. You don't look as good as the 45 no. minute to an hour and a half get ready with me. Definitely not. So why are we even doing it? No idea. Maybe it will like be a learning like experience, and we'll get you out of your comfort zone. Bree yeah. looks like she wants to stop me. Uh, <laughs> I'm like. No. I mean, it is. I do have to, but yeah. I just, I'm yeah. not ready. I wasn't ready for this. It was, I was shook. Right. I mean, I understand that. Cause I mean, it's not just about makeup. You met her when you were 17 yeah. modeling. Mm-hmm. What is that like? 
being a 17, like I had to do a shoot the other day. I'm not a model, but I had to do a shoot. And I like, I feel it's like nerve wracking. It know? is. Yeah. Especially when you don't know and you're like brand new and they like put you in front of the camera and, and they these don't, lights. And, and they like, don't direct uh, you at all. Like they the, don't, they don't say a pee. Mm-mm. I'm like, okay, so I guess I'll just, <laughs> I guess I'll just arch my back now. Yeah. It's crazy. But you were 17 doing mm-hmm. that. Yeah, it was, but she was great. So it's like that bond is just kind of hard to replace. And of course. You have to think about it. these are people you work with every, at least three to four days a week, especially when you're filming. They're in your home. They're in your space. They're with my child. They're, you know what I mean? It's just, it's a lot more personal than that too. Mm-hmm. So I think, and it's just like, I know when I sit down, like I can just trust her and that's just, it's a different thing I yeah. feel like. But yeah, so I'm going to go home and cry about it, but <laughs> you know. No, I feel like, I don't know. How do we convince her to stay? I tried. I tried bribing. <laughs> I tried no increasing salary. <laughs> no, honestly, she made a really smart move for her and her family. And it's a great, great job for her. Mm-hmm. And I mean, let's be real. LA is so expensive. Like people can't, we can't survive here anymore. It's getting out of control. Crazy. So um, honestly, I'm really happy for her I, over everything. I'm not happy for my face, but I'm very happy for her. So <laughs> I think that she did what, you know, she needed to do for her kids and yeah. her family. So yeah. That, yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Like, yeah. if, you're, if we're just talking about, like, makeup artists, it's, you know, you met her when you were 17. Yeah. And you were probably, like, thrown into that world and had Absolutely. no idea what you were doing. Yeah. And so I'm sure your, your guys' bond is, like, very, like, special and deep. 100%. She's been through everything with me. Everything. <laughs> everything. All my drama, all my men, all my whatever. <laughs> like, she's been here. <laughs> Evelyn, shout out. I feel like this is this is dedicated to Evelyn. Yes, it is. I love you. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> so modeling at 17, did you grow up looking in the mirror thinking this should be on every magazine cover? I'm the hottest thing to walk planet Earth. No. I should be a model. No. No. Definitely not. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was more of like a tomboy, which it, most people would never guess. No. I was very much a tomboy. I never wore makeup. I never did any of those things. I actually um, started dating someone who was in the industry and actually was in reality. And his family was like, you should model. And like, I was actually working at a dentist office. Oh, and, shit. Yeah, it was super random. Yeah. Um, my cousin is actually in that field. So she was like, just come work here. And so you figure it out, you oh, know, whatever. Amazing. And um, I was still in high school. And then they introduced me to this whole different world. And I was like, oh, I can make way more money doing this. Like, okay, <laughs> sure. I'll do whatever you want. Um, so then I just kind of like as soon as I stepped into it, I ended up just getting job after job. And then I was just kind of engulfed in it. But Wow. I didn't know how to do anything, like mascara, nothing. Like I, It's not like the kids now where they have YouTube and you can learn everything. Like we looked crazy. I, I, <laughs> You're just thrown out there. I, I want to post a picture, maybe I will, of what I looked like at 16. I'm talking the Jessica Simpson clip-in hair extensions, which – were plastic, which you had three colors to choose out of. They're plastic? They're plastic. They're not real hair. Oh. And I always got the curly kind. <laughs> so I'd have to wear my hair curly every day because they're plastic. <laughs> oh. There's three colors to choose from. So I'm like, okay, you know what? This brown, this I'll make it work. Like I'll make it Just work. chop it in. We'll blend it in. It'll be fine. <laughs> and uh, I would not take great care of them. Because I would consider myself high maintenance, but I'm also kind of low maintenance. Like, we will go to the grocery store looking like we live under a bridge. Mm -hmm. Bridge trolls. Yes. And I'm sorry I just, like, looped you into that. No, no, I 100% do. (laughs) So I, you know, I'm totally down to, like, grab lunch with my friends, no makeup. Same. In high school, I would sleep. With my Jessica Simpson hair extensions in my head, which you are not supposed to do. They are clip-ins. You are not supposed to do that. I I swear to God. I have bald spots. <laughs> no, I have like – that's when yeah. I decided to give up extensions. Mm, yeah. Is when I was like bre- – like you could see like bald spots. Also, I think, you know, senior year of high school is when I really ramped up my party girl sh- <laughs> But you brought Jessica Simpsons yeah. along with you or no? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, mm. I was I was the coolest girl in high school with my Jessica Simpson extensions, but I would fall asleep in them. 
You know what I mean? I, like I wouldn't remember to take them out. So basically what my head and hair looked like was like one rat tail right here. Oh and then God. like, and it would be like bunched up. Have you ever worn extensions? Oh yeah. You know how like bad ones, they'll get like super like matted, matted yeah. right here. And then like just three little like pieces of hair, like strings like this. So um, basically, I don't look like – I didn't look like anything like 16, 17-year-olds today. No. I looked insane. <laughs> Wait, I want to know. Oh, and mine are all over the internet. So oh, they are? So please, everyone, feel free. Like I look – well, first of all, it's before my nose job, so I'm a whole new bitch anyways. But it was like this whole black <laughs> eyeliner, and it's all like bleeding down under your eyes because you have it in your waterline and can't. like your mascara that's like – together. It was horrific. Was it, were you kind of into like the emo thing? Yeah. I think that's kind of the other thing too. And it wasn't like, we didn't know how to contour our face and like highlight and shit. Like I was smudging black eyeliner (laughs) in my eye and like trying to rub it off by the time I got home to not get in trouble. Oh shit. Your parents would get mad. Oh yeah. So they'd be like, you think we can't see that? It's like all smudged all over my face. I'm like, what? Uh, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I, had, I had a hard day. <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to think of a super fast way to get fucking like mascara and eyeliner off your eye. Mm-mm. There's no way. No. You're like, mom, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like I got in a fight. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. My mom was very strict too about the makeup thing. Yeah. But then 17, you started modeling. Were you, um, out of high school at that point? Yeah, I graduated. I technically graduated at 17. Um, and I went straight in until I was like, I don't know. I actually modeled straight till I was probably 30. Um, I went I went with Rockstar. That was like my first contract. So it was more of like the, what do they call that? Like promo modeling, I guess. Yeah, I, the Rockstar model. Yes. I was obsessed. That was a thing up. then. Like, of course. It was like, it was so cool. It was like the first thing Those you ever did. Those were the hottest bitches on Instagram. It was Rockstar so, models. And we got to travel everywhere and I had never been anywhere. And it was like, it really did change so much for me, especially just like being from Calabasas and not doing much and just like <laughs> sitting at home with my parents. All of a sudden I'm traveling all over. I'm getting paid to do this. Like yeah. you literally just got dressed up every day. I was like, fuck yeah, this is it. I'm for this. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy right out of high school. Yeah. Did you learn like very quickly? Did you ever feel like insecure? Because I know that industry, I feel like I would compare myself to everyone and – I wouldn't say – now that I'm older, I know that, you know, there's always going to be someone hotter, prettier, better, whatever. But at 17, I think I would have been very impressionable with that shit. I don't know. I never really felt like that. I never have really had that in me. I don't know why. I know people are like, oh, of course you did. I felt like certain things about myself, but I didn't feel like it was from other people in that sense. Like I knew I wanted to get my nose done always like Mm -hmm. I had always known that that was something before it wasn't a comparable to me per se but I think that the only thing I I guess would make me feel any type of way would be like when they were doing better than I was or more successful or they got let's say like a maxim spread or they got something and I'm like okay how did she get that like how do I get there but I never really felt like physically any type of way about any of the girls are felt insecure or anything like that. I actually felt like most of the girls at that time were really supportive and really sweet. Yeah. And when we used to try out for stuff, you had to fucking take your little book of photos and go in and go to like real castings. And like you had to really be picked. You didn't get the, it's a lot easier now on Instagram and online to get to this stuff, Mm -hmm. like and to be discovered and to interact with people and, you know, get verified and all that. We didn't have any of that. So Uh, now you can pay $15 and be verified. Exactly. So (laughs) So, it is not the same. So you never had like body image issues? No. Even before modeling? No, I really didn't. I mean, I think the only thing that really kind of threw me off- yeah, it was my nose, and I and I fixed that immediately. But Wait, how? <laughs> I literally like I knew my whole immediately. Life. I was like, no, she's got to go. Like <laughs> she what can't does that stay mean? here. <laughs> it was just, it just didn't fit my face. Like it just didn't. <laughs> I was like, no, I can. We can do better with this. Like she's she's got to leave. So I saved all of my money to go to Raj Kanodia. 
Like, what is that? Uh, his, he's, he did Jessica Simpson's. I her, literally no, thought wait. it was a place. Not I was Jessica like, Simpson. I can't be that dumb. What's her sister's name? Wait, who'd you say? Thank you. Ashley Simpson, not Jessica oh, Simpson. Oh, oh, okay. Ashley Simpson's nose. And I think that's what really put him on the map. And mm. then I was like, okay, he can, he can fix this. And he doesn't like cut your nose off and like pull it back and do all that crazy shit. He literally goes through your nostrils. I have no scars, no anything. <gasps> no like, way. He's amazing. No way. Amazing. I know Alex is sitting there eating. She really. She, so Alex is my cousin, but okay. she works with me. She um, she asked me for her birthday, dead ass, to get her a non-surgical nose job. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her I know you can afford this. I'll need that. Thank you. <laughs> right, I actually can't. So I'll get you. I'll get you eyelash extension. I'll get you makeup artist contour. So it wasn't non-surgical, but there's surgeons that literally cut it off. Yeah, well, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> There's like a nose job where they like break your nose and chisel it That's down what and I do all they kinds of do. crazy shit. Not for everybody. Okay. Like he does still go through the nostrils and like shave down and do different things. Mm-hmm. Um, Khloe Kardashian actually just went to him as well and they were talking about that. He just does a less invasive type of surgery. But like the non-surgical ones are, they're usually like filler and stuff to like even you out. They don't really... They can't really like fix. See, I don't per se. Right, that I know of. They put like filler type stuff, and I'm like, but how would that? I mean, they do it. Seems it would make you like more flat if that's what you want. But I do feel like it makes it bigger. Your nose bigger. Well, yeah. So it's like yeah. (laughs) It just depends. It depends on what you're looking for. Yeah, but it's like an option for sure. So you knew your whole life. Oh yeah. Which, by the way, can I just point out? I think it's so refreshing and badass and just shows how confident you are that you're open talking about it oh for sure I've I've, no shame (laughs) I like I love that shit how many people in LA lie to you about that type of thing everyone everyone lies I don't really know why (laughs) I don't know if it's like a I'm perfect like just I don't know I don't get it I I don't even care less I don't think it's a flex no I don't you're like it's like saying like Okay, I'm, you know, average looking normally, but at least I don't have this, this, and this, which would make me, you know, exponentially cuter. Bye. Like you're still, you're, you're in the average yeah. lane. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get in the average. for saying this shit. I don't give a She's fuck. Like, no, I mean, teach his own. Listen, if I can fix it, I, why wouldn't I? I can. I have the option. Thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, whatever. I'm also for if you want to be natural, great. Mm-hmm. You're not bothering me either way. I'm just letting just, you know where I stand. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you're like my whole life. Yeah. I'm, like, mm-hmm. how old for real? No, dad ass. I was probably like 12. <laughs> no, no, I'm so serious. And I was like, mom. And she was like, I know, honey. We'll get, don't worry. <laughs> oh, my God. Really? Yes. My mom had hers. Like, my grandma had hers. I love that. Yeah, they were all like, no, no, you You'll get there. Yeah. So, I mean, your yeah. parents... <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah. Your parents did something right because the fact that you went through middle school and high school with zero body dysmorphia and like what the fuck is incredible. Oh, thanks. I think, I don't know. I just was, I was a boy. I'm telling you, I was a tomboy. I hung out with the boys. Now I, I did sports. You. Like I literally like, that's why even now with what I do and like, I don't really care about the drama and stuff. I'm always just like, I don't, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm just here, guys. <laughs> See, I think I'm the biggest girly girl on planet Earth. Really? I can only hang out with like a group of guys for like 30 minutes <laughs> and then I can no longer stand it. Okay, so you got the nose job when you were how old? I think I was 18. 18 or 19. Okay. I might have been 19. Okay. Yeah. And you paid for it with all your modeling? Literally every dollar I had. I didn't care if I was like broken homeless. I was like, we are paying for this. (laughs) The nose. Oh, yeah. That Mm -hmm. is so funny. And then you've been open about all your plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. Boobs? Yeah. Done. Done. Twice. Okay. When did you get them done? I got my boobs done when I was 18. Um, so I got my boobs and my nose were the, those were the two things that I was like, for sure. I was like, I want this and, and I'm good. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I was always like, I weighed like 110 pounds, super skinny, like not very feminine body feel. Not curvy. No, I wasn't at all. Um, just very ripped and skinny and not cute. (laughs) So I was like, I need to feel a little feminine. I want to get my boobs and fix my nose. And then I didn't think I did anything else until I was like... Probably like 25 or 24, somewhere around there. And that's when I started seeing like 
a little bit of lines and whatever in my face. And they were like, oh, you can do Botox. It's preventative. At 24? Yeah. They For always real, you did? Swear. And they always tell you, but I'm also like obsessed with laying in the sun, which ages you and does all of those things. And I do you still not. do it? Oh, yeah. I fucking love it. I'm like, <laughs> I'll just get more Botox and laser. It's fine. <laughs> Me too. I love it. And everyone's always like, number one thing that will age you. I know. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do retinol all day. Exactly. Is there anything you've gotten that you regret? Cool sculpt. That's probably the only thing. Worst fucking thing I've ever done. Because it doesn't work? Well, okay. So base, I was like livid about this shit for years. So basically as like an influencer or anyone, a content creator, you know, whatever the hell you want to call that, Mm -hmm. they always offer you stuff, right? And you're always like, fuck yeah, this is free. Let me come in and give this a try. (laughs) So of course I didn't do as much research as I probably should have. And I'm always down. So I'm like, yeah, cool. I go in and I do it. And first of all, they want to give you like an Ativan. That should have been my first warning. Like, is that why like a, the fuck do I wait, need an Ativan for this? Is that like a Klonopin? It kind of, yeah. Like a Xanax it, type Yeah, thing? but like, it's like they're highly addictive and they're like super intense. So it's like, why do I need something this strong for this procedure? No, like, am right. I going under? Like, what are you doing to me? Right. They're like, no, no, it's nothing. It's just to make you more comfortable. First of all, ain't nothing comfortable about that procedure whatsoever. Stop. And they like take this machine and they like put it. I call it my fupa. So they put it to your fupa (laughs) and it has like this like square box. I don't even know why they would make it like this. And it basically is supposed to like pull all the fat molecules and your body like metabolizes it, whatever their science is there. It just gave me a fat pack. Like it gave full, you that after? Yes. So they Stop. told me it was like a no. prevent. Yeah. It told me it was a preventative. Oh, shit. It was not. It literally gave me this crazy, like it pulled all the fat all right, but it didn't go anywhere. It just went no. right here. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was just like, so I go back and I won't name the doctor because I still love him. He fixed it. So it's oh, fine. Oh, he fixed it. Okay. But I was literally like, what in the actual fuck is this? And he was like, I have never seen that before. I am so sorry. And I'm like, how does this happen? And he's like, well, sometimes it happens. And I'm like, oh, you didn't think to tell me that before, though, huh? <laughs> you thought the Ativan would make oh, me forget. Yeah, exactly. I'm he's fucking like, here. I'm sharp you. as a tack. Oh, my God. It was awful. And I was so upset about it for probably like a good... Probably like a year and a half. It took a while. Like you to had go To go away? Yeah, because I had to do all of the um, body sculpting, whatever the hell you call Wait, it. Wait, what is it called? Uh, Lymphatic, lymphatic drainage and like they use the wood therapy and then they use that like it's called like lipo cavitation it's really just like a heat machine that like melts your fat but they do like this whole process and you have to do it all the time and it takes like two hours and it's like I was not happy does it work I definitely worked it definitely eventually went away and he also did kybella mm. in my stomach so between all of that we made it go away but it was like a lesson to think twice before accepting just anything <laughs> I'm offered and to actually do my research yeah but I was lucky it was just that that I fucked up so right yeah. and also if they offer you an Ativan yeah that you should probably say no and leave yeah yeah like in the waiting yeah. room I'll Total take the water. Ativan but I'm gonna take it home with me yeah. <laughs> I was gonna leaving. say I'm not mad about it no. but maybe not before Mm-mm. well I'm so happy that you bought up brought up your belly because <laughs> uh oh <laughs> First of all, I wanted to ask you how you knew you were pregnant. Not, Why are you I know. Pregnant? I know. What, is, what is happening right now? <laughs> You're like, so you can Google it. Yeah, well, well, You're like, when a man meets a woman uh, and mm-hmm. they fall in love. <laughs> or don't. Or, yeah. do, or don't. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, that's yeah. a great point. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say 80% of the men I've hooked up with, there is no love there. Same. So thank you for yeah. correcting me. But I. Just had my period and my boobs significantly bigger, which I know you would not believe because they're <laughs> ginormous out here. <laughs> significantly bigger, and I have been bloated for two weeks. Two weeks, and that has never happened to me. I know people are always like, oh my God, I'm bloated, blah, blah, blah. So bad. But so you just bad. had your period. Yes. A, a normal period. I've heard about false periods, though. Yes. I, I could take a pregnancy test. I was, like, going to say, well, I mean, you could have told me I would have brought us one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing about pregnancy tests. I would never, if I knew I had to work the next day. Why? 
What do you mean? You're going to have to take because, it with you anyways. No, <laughs> you're already pregnant. <laughs> People talk about pregnancy tests like, oh, you just like, you know, you take it whenever because you want to know. That would ruin, that would put me in a headspace that I would, I would fuck up. Like I would not be able to get on this microphone and like discuss something with you like a normal person. I'd be freaking the fuck out. So my whole thing (laughs) is I have to wait until I'm back in New York in my apartment. I don't have, it's like a weekend. I don't have work. I have a couple days to freak out, cry, call my mom, take care of the situation however I want to. And, you know, and then I could be ready for work on Monday. (laughs) Sounds like a really long weekend. (laughs) Sounds like you're missing a bottle of wine in there and a few other steps. (laughs) But yes, okay. Okay, when you found out you were pregnant, and congratulations Thank you. on your baby, you're a newish mom. Very. Right? Very new. I'm new here. Uh, I am Don't new here. Don't know what I'm doing, but I'm here. <laughs> I actually, yeah, I got, I found out I was pregnant when I was filming, actually, not Selling Sunset. I was filming for a while and out, and I actually kind of had a moment like you were just talking about, and I was like, what the fuck? I need to leave. I don't want to be here. And I literally Hello? left mid taping and went home. <laughs> yeah. I was like, nope, I'm out of here. I got to go. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. I can actually kind of relate to that. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, wait, I did leave. I did walk right out. Wait, yeah. did you take, did you do the pregnancy test like between like filming? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, it's fine. It's going to be fine. <laughs> Let me just go get one. And then of course, I'm sitting in the room by myself staring at this like, why did I just do this to myself? I yeah. could have like waited for any of the girls. I could have waited for my partner. I could have done so many other things besides take this by myself that right is, now. <laughs> the fact you decided to take it while you were filming that, yeah. did you yeah. like, did you tell anyone what was going on or you just like fled? I basically fled. Bye. Yeah, I basically was like, gotta go, bye. And everybody's like, is she good? Like, no, yeah. no, she's not good. Okay, well, thank you yeah. for justifying <laughs> yeah. what I've been saying. Yeah. But it's been really fucking crazy. So, you know what? I'm going to take one after this. Oh. I'm going. I'm going to do it. Okay, if you flee, I, it's not my fault, guys. I didn't tell her to flee. <laughs> I just said I happen to flee. <laughs> I just, I don't know how you take a pregnancy test and it shows up that you're pregnant and you're like, dope, throw in the garbage, go about your day. Like, no one fucking does that shit. I'm, yeah. So how did you know you were pregnant to my original question? Actually, because I didn't want alcohol and this girl likes to drink. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Stop it. Wait. Wait. If you find out with me on this podcast, I'm going to feel really, I'm going to feel really lucky, guys. No, you guys. (laughs) Alex. Wait, are you grossed out by it? Not, not grossed out. No, not the baby of the... (laughs) Of the, the liquor. For people who are uh, listening to this and not watching it, which you should be watching, uh, my cousin Alex just uh, looked at Brie and asked if she was disgusted by um, her baby. <laughs> no. I am freaking. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, so the entire studio, how cute is this? Guys, I'm pregnant. <laughs> I mean, not to scare you or anything, but... Um, <laughs> okay, no, give me another reason. Give me another well, reason. Well, this is actually what happened to me when I was in Europe. I went with my best friends, and um, I actually had had a miscarriage, and I was super worked up about it, I'm and um, I was like, fuck this, I'm going to Europe. I'm out of here. My mm-hmm. partner is like, whatever, crazy, I'll see you later. So I leave, I'm gone for a full month, and Any ounce of alcohol, smelling it, anything, I was, like, repulsed, disgusting. The girls were like, what is wrong with you? Take your fucking shots. Like, we're in Europe. Like, we're going to have a great time. (laughs) And I was like, no. No, I am not. And I was just tired and grumpy, and I was just like, no. And the second I got back, I had to go straight to filming, actually, when I landed. And that was when I was with the same girlfriend, and she was like, yeah, no, it's time. And I was like- To take the test? "Uh Uh-huh. And she was like, you were no fun in Europe. And I was like, I'm always fun. (laughs) And she was like, no. And then I started thinking about it, and I was like, oh, shit. I really didn't drink anything I ordered. I didn't touch any of it. I didn't like the smell of, like, everything. Yeah, it kind of added up. The smell of everything's fine. I'm not grumpy. 
I'm tired, but like I'm always – I'm the bitch that's like, I'm tired. That's what I, like, I, <laughs> I love saying that. It's my favorite thing. Yeah, I'm and tired. people get annoyed and I'm like, fuck you. Why do you have energy? <laughs> I mean, that means you're that. not. That means you're not like getting after it exactly. the way I am. So uh, there's a there's a significant chance I might be with child, but <laughs> we we won't know. We won't know until I have a vacation. Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, you have to let me know. I will. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, are you joking? Oh my gosh. Tell me if I'm glowing. I mean, girl, you're fine as fuck. Of course, you're glowing. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's not it has nothing to do with the baby. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so very fucking scary. Uh, I don't know. I have the period. I'm going to pretend like it's not happening. Perfect. I'm, I will be the lady that like I'm using the toilet and like a baby falls out. You've seen like those. You've read like those. I've definitely. Yep. <laughs> I've always wondered how these women let that happen. But you let me know. Oh, I'm a living testament. Because it's just, yeah. Like why like – I don't want to like – bring negative energy into my life. <laughs> I don't want to deal with the whole child that I'm creating. It's fine. <laughs> no, just the pregnancy <laughs> test. I'm sure the child would be great. Yes. But I don't need that negative energy right now. Yeah. So no <laughs> so no pregnancy <laughs> test is happening. Will I continue having sex and they're not using a condom? A hundred percent. Well then. But, you know. Russian roulette. That's what, that's what you got to do. <laughs> that's what you got to do. We played Russian roulette for a long time. <laughs> yes. But it eventually happens. <laughs> Does it though? Because yeah. I am under the impression like I'm fucking good. Like I'm lucky. Isn't that crazy? I think there should be a rule where you need to ask yourself when you are fucking without a condom, you're in the moment and you think it'd be hot to tell them like, oh my God, like come in me. whatever. Because like that's dirty talk, you know? I'm not <laughs> Bree is looking at me. I'm like, it's horrified. more of like an invitation, but yes. <laughs> sure. I'm like, it's so crazy. I don't know how I'd be pregnant. I have I'm like, no oh. idea. <laughs> My favorite dirty talk. You need to think to yourself, would I want to have a baby with this man? It's a good start. Like kind of and not yeah. really. Because you could just be on birth control. It's 2023. I don't know, guys. I ha- Sorry, pregnancy <laughs> brain. Okay. <laughs> Quick segue. So, Brie, you live in Los Angeles now. How long have you been living here? I'm born and raised here. Oh. Yeah. So you just did like a little pit stop in Vegas. Yeah. Okay, Mm -hmm. got it. I was talking to Brie earlier. Um, One of my really good friends, you were like mutual friends with her. Yeah. So we were doing modeling. And then when did you decide to pick up real estate? Well, I went from modeling actually to bottle service. And right, in so Vegas. I was like, okay, I want to work um, smarter, not harder. I want to make more money. So I know that I can work six months out of the year and make, you know, 150K minimum. So I was like, I can do that and then figure out what I want to do because I eventually like have to be a grown up. Yeah. <laughs> and then I decided, like, all right, what's the next thing I can do that can make me like bigger money and I get some freedom? It was real estate. So I basically leveraged everything I had done, modeling, bottle service, everything. And I just used that for real estate, which worked out perfectly. Can you like elaborate a little bit? Because I love this. Like, how did you use your modeling to help you? I think that when if you do it the right way in modeling, you're meeting all of the CEOs, the execs, you're working for these companies. Like if you have good relationships and you're making it with those people, then you usually meet the higher ups. And that was kind of my goal. So whether I'm like... I worked for like fantasy lingerie or whatever it was. I wanted to continue that relationship. And so that way I can now I can go back to that CEO and be like, hey, you know, I'm hosting whatever in Vegas come out. And once you have a more of like a real relationship and a friendship that really changed real estate for me, I feel like, because, yes, anyone that has money and anyone that has contacts and anyone that has a license can reach out to you. But it's really the relationship that I hold with you, which is going to make you decide that you would rather purchase with me than someone else. Totally. So I kind of like leverage being the plug for everyone and everything, whether it was like cars, houses, jets, like you want to invite a bunch of girls. I knew everyone in LA, mm-hmm. like whatever it was, like I wanted to have all of it. Like you were the plug, like you would hook people up, like anything, whatever they wanted. So, and I met a lot of like soccer players. I met a lot of like people from overseas, like people you would never normally meet Mm -hmm. doing bottle service because they're all coming to Vegas to party. Yeah. So, and I made really good friendships and like long term stuff. And then it kind of just put me in different rooms with people I never thought I would be with. And that's really like, I feel like what accelerated everything. Yeah. Vegas is a really crazy place. Yeah. 
in the sense that you can meet people so quickly and it's I don't think it's like that really in too many other places. I think people's wall is down. Like they're here to party. They want to have a good right. time. Like they're really not they're in a different space. Like mm-hmm. when everyone says like what stays in Vegas, like what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Like people really live by that. They do. <laughs> they can attest from working there. Yeah. So I think that I don't know. It was just, it was so different. I've never had an experience like I did working in Vegas for sure. Just like the connections were crazy. Yeah. I was going to ask you, did you enjoy your time there? I did actually. I think it's something that either eats you alive, just kind of like LA does. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm not a huge partier. Like I don't, I don't do drugs. Like it's never really been my thing. Like I like to drink, but I'm also like, all right, I got to go to work. I have a bag to make. So like I know when to take my ass home. So it didn't like devour my life, which I saw happen to a lot of people um, all the time, which is Uh, unfortunate. Yeah. It happens to a lot, a lot of people there. And then after Vegas, so you did two years, Mm -hmm. then you moved to LA and right away real estate. I kind of was just in between everything. I was married at the time to an athlete and he was... Did you meet him in Vegas? Unfortunately, yes. (laughs) I'm fucking moving to Vegas. Bye. Yeah. I'm like, well, let me figure my whole eyelid out here for a second. I'm like, I don't know if it's twitching from the the person or if it's from my eye. Um, Yeah. No, I met my husband there, actually. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but that's that's what happened. I mean, goes to Vegas. Um, And then we moved back and I kind of... I was in a position where I had enough money saved. I I was good, but I still like just didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I really wasn't pushing towards real estate. I wasn't pushing towards modeling. I was kind of just like, fuck, like I don't want to, I don't know what I want. Yeah. And valid. it really just kind of fell into my lap. Um, I had a couple clients that I didn't really think we're going to take me seriously. It's really hard to transition from partying with people and being a model to stepping into business. I bet. It's hard. People look at you and they're like, oh, she's just fucking hot or oh, she's with so-and-so and and you get zero credibility. It doesn't matter how well-spoken you are. It doesn't matter what your credentials are. It doesn't matter about any of that. So I was pleasantly surprised to see that the people I had built relationships with like really saw me for who I was and trusted me and like gave me the opportunities that they did. And I actually kind of surprised myself I think and I was like oh, okay I can be an adult now like let me figure love, this shit out yeah like, and I just completely transitioned my life like all the friends everybody that I used to hang out with talk to like the way I would dress like everything I did like a complete turnaround like wow. once I got my divorce and I like changed my whole life it was it was different it was different yeah. do you think the divorce like it pushed you to like a dark place or like a place where you're like oh I gotta like change shit Oh, for sure. I think that was like probably aside from what I just went through this year, it was like one of the hardest things that I had ever been through because you really had to like take a look at yourself. And it was like, yes, I made this vow to this person and to be married, but like I'm miserable. This is miserable. Like Mm -hmm. I can't help this person no matter how much I want to. And it's not my job and it's honestly not my responsibility or my problem. And even though that sounds cold and awful, like it's It's the truth. And I, I allowed it to affect me so much and, you know, it hindered my growth, my success, like anything that I deserved and worked for. And I just couldn't live like that anymore. And I, I gave all the ultimatums I could give. I did what I needed to do. And I and I, I had to step away. And as soon as I did, my life like completely changed. Wow. So I don't know. I, I think it's like a, it's interesting. Like when you actually want to make that transition, mm-hmm. it's a lot easier than you think it's going to be. Oh, I love that. Yeah, like you, I just had to take the chance. And I was like, fuck it. What else could I fuck up at this point? Like, I have nothing <laughs> I to lose. Well. No. I always say this. There is nothing more powerful than a woman, specifically a woman yeah. who has nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. Or dangerous. One or the <laughs> yeah. other. I was like, this is going powerful. one of two ways here, okay? <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. I love, thank you for sharing. I love um, what you pointed out is you know, you can love someone to death, whether it's a family member, a friend, you're in a relationship with someone. If they don't want to, is that funny? <laughs> I'm choking. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I'm choking. I'm oh like my the gosh. one serious thing I've literally said. 
<laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'll definitely be Don't choke. How dare you? Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, if you're gonna choke, <laughs> fucking swallow it and creep outside. <laughs> just kidding, Alex. Love you. Oh my gosh. Uh, no, I think I'm just really happy that you pointed that out. And I think people need to hear that. You, even if it's a family member, best friend, someone you're romantically with, it doesn't matter. At a certain point, you cannot babysit people Mm -hmm. and you cannot make them better if they don't want to get better. Exactly. And that's a really hard thing. It is. I mean, and obviously there's like, you feel some sort of responsibility there. You know what I mean? It's like, but- I don't know. I I was like, am I selfish? I was like, no, fuck this. I'm not selfish. I did everything that I could possibly do, bent over backwards, like Mm -hmm. drug myself through the mud. And like, luckily for me, you know, he was very aware of that and made that very public and was very, you know, forthcoming with that. So I did appreciate that aspect. And we have a great relationship now, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, So, and like, you know, we still talk. I still fully check in and support him and like, you know, I'm all for it. And I think he's actually doing a lot better. But I think that just like as a woman, like we are taught that we're supposed to stay with these men no matter what. And you stay with them until we fucking die. And like, it doesn't matter if we're (laughs) miserable and all of that. And that's just not my MO. I was like, no fucking thank you. So see, I grew up a little bit differently where I never stay in a relationship. I've never, you're going to be pissed at me. (laughs) You're going to be really upset. I am not very loyal in relationships with men. In my friendships, like Mm -hmm. with girls, my best friends, loyal till the death. I've cheated on a lot of boyfriends. And I'm trying to change now. I've changed. I don't know. I just feel like... I've always had three boyfriends at a time. I feel oh, like. Oh, <laughs> I feel like why did you? <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not somebody. I didn't want to get married. Like that wasn't like my. Yeah, what? Like thing. why? Like I wasn't like I didn't have a fucking wedding. I didn't have a dress. I got married in freaking white sweatpants, looking like a troll. Like I did not give two fucks. No one was there. Nobody knew. Like shut up. I was never my dream. Like I'm not like the girl that like planned it out in yeah. Italy and like you know whatever. Right. So I don't. I don't have a problem with any of that, honestly. I mean, like, I respect people that want to be, like, monogamous and get married. Great. Good for you. But I'm good on all of that. Like, Uh, thank you. I feel like I can breathe now. Yeah, no, I don't. (laughs) There's no judgment here. (laughs) And I'm like... I might cheat on you. I might not cheat on you. It really just depends on yeah, how you treat me. But I'm a, but I'm <laughs> Am I good, interested? Am I not? <laughs> but I'm a good person. No, I and don't think that counts. makes you a bad person. No. I, I know everybody else does. They all think we're bad people. But I'm not like you're... I didn't say I wasn't going to cheat on you. If Thank I said you. that, then maybe. But I didn't say that. I just said that we were talking. If I don't so, clarify no. going into something with you... No. Like, yeah, I'm sorry, was there a contract? Was no. there an attorney present? No. I didn't. I was like, I never claimed I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> so therefore, that's all you, buddy. <laughs> it's not me. And period. Yeah. Period. So that's, we're on the same page, don't we? Thank you. Yeah. I was like so scared to tell you. You got married in, I, at least they were white sweatpants. They sure were. Yep. Okay, so you yep. had that going. I wore like a white <laughs> bodysuit, one piece, fucking ba- basically swimwear, and I wore sweatpants. Did, and that was it. Do the people at the courthouse were you guys under the influence at all? No, I wish I was. It would be a better story, but okay. it, it definitely wasn't. <laughs> okay. It was very sober. It was like eight thirty in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> How does yeah. that like I don't even I can't even comprehend. Yeah, it was like a are you ready? I'm ready. Let me take the dogs out and get my coffee. Okay, great. Do you guys say take each other forever, whatever the fuck? And we're both like, yep. Are the people at the courthouse, like, do they just see it all day long so they don't give a fuck? No, not at all. So they're not like, what is this bitch wearing? No, no. They're literally like, so blah, 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 blah. Yes. (laughs) Was that a yes? Can I hear you consent? Can you say it louder? Like, it's hilarious. You're like, do you want me to fucking yell at you? Like, yes. I said yes. (laughs) And they're like, like, you're wearing sweatpants. So I just want to double check. Make sure you weren't forced here. (laughs) Yeah. Are there, were there other people there uh, mm-hmm. basically women wearing dresses yes, and shit. Yes, I was. Yeah. Were they looking at you judgmental as fuck? Absolutely. <laughs> they were like, well, what is wrong with this girl? Why are you here? I'm sure they probably had faith that I was having a real wedding like somewhere else. They were probably yeah. like hopeful that I wasn't 
as disrespectful as I am getting married in my sweatpants <laughs> in the courthouse without any family or witnesses. But I definitely wasn't. You know what? It was spontaneous. Yeah. You're just fun like yeah, that. Basically. I think it's fucking dope. Yeah. Did you fine. but no, you didn't annul it because you guys were together for a while. We tried. <laughs> but the way COVID happened, it didn't work out that way. It did not what's, work out. So that Kevin Hart skit when he's like, you know, the way my bank account is set up. Mm-hmm. That's me. The way my life is set up. It just yeah. doesn't fucking work out for me. Yeah. We laugh about that to this day because he'll be like, we were fucking married longer than we were ever actually together. And I'm Stop, like. Stop. You were? Yes, we were. <laughs> yeah. Like we technically were like together for the year that we were actually married. And then COVID hit and I filed and they basically were like, you thought you're going to be married for two more years. And yeah, I couldn't do anything. So I had to walk around with his last name and I'm like <laughs> fully pregnant. Like your ID, <laughs> shut yeah. up, shut up. So yeah. your ID had his uh-huh. last name. Oh yeah, girl. Yeah. And you're pregnant with someone else. Yeah. And, and everyone knows the last name. So they're looking at me fucking crazy. Yeah. And they're literally like, <laughs> okay, um, sure. Is this? And I'm like, please don't. They're just, like, it's not please don't. adding yeah. <laughs> It's not. They're like, mm, no. Uh huh. Yeah, it was like just. Shh. Yeah, he enjoyed that. Whenever time I would, I would tell him <laughs> that he thought it was hilarious. So, damn. Yeah. Will you ever get married again? No. No. no Straight up. No, there was no. no hesitation there. Zero. What? Why? What for? Fucking why? Why? What? What's the point? That's I don't get saying. it. Like I really don't. I could fully be with somebody and love you to death and you were my person once we decide that together and we actually agree to that, mm-hmm. then <laughs> I can be here and be loyal and we can figure that out. But yeah. I don't think that a piece of paper makes any fucking difference. And like what if it comes down to money and stuff, I mean- That's my, that would be the only reason I would. But even still, like get a prenup. You can still have a prenup without being married. You can still have paperwork to secure yourself without being married. Wait, you can? Yes. You can do things to secure yourself. You can have paperwork. I don't know that's technically a prenup, Uh but it's like you can have paperwork. And even like my family attorney was like, when you get married, the best thing for you to do is to create whatever your agreement is going to be or your prenup or whatever in the beginning when you guys still like each other so that you take care of each other regardless of like what happens. Obviously, some people are like, oh, if she cheats on me, fuck you, you get nothing. But that's on them. They, they that, make their decision. They make that's their on paperwork. Them. And was it in the contract? Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know. You can still cover your ass, but also like, I don't know. I just don't want to be I don't want to. I I, <laughs> I, I honestly, to. I say this all the time. I know for a fact I want to have kids. Yeah. <laughs> Which she might just, be. <laughs> just, a little, just a little ironic that I just said uh-huh. that so casually. Yeah. Uh, I know I want to have kids. I, I don't know if marriage is for me. And I'm totally, I was raised by a single mom. I'm totally fine doing that. I, I mean, it's don't, not get me preferred, wrong, it's but... don't get me wrong, it's yeah, hard. Don't get me wrong, it's hard. It's fucking hard. Yeah. But it's like... Honestly, I I would make this decision a million times. I absolutely love it. Of it course. works for me. And I I don't want to clean up after a grown ass man and take care of you. Like I already have a child. I'm taking care of a child. Yeah. So I, I do applaud the men and the women that have men that take care of them and actually help out. But there's a very small percentage of that. Mm-hmm. And I no thank you. I just Yeah. I've only dated no, that's a fucking lie. <laughs> I was about to lie. <laughs> but usually I date dudes that babysit me not okay. babysit because I'm you know an adult but like they clean up after me they cook for me where like, did you find those I don't know but then they're lacking in every other area <laughs> so it's like not that hard. okay well there yeah okay I'm like yeah I haven't found one of those <laughs> yet I mean they might pay someone to do it but it's not the same <laughs> I'm like Salvation Army and like, he actually wasn't even shopping there he's outside of asking for asking for money. No. The guys I've dated Wait, are incredible. I thought that was for real for a second. I was like, wait, hold on. I was like, I am putting some regulations on your vagina from here on out if that's what's happening. You're like, this bitch is crazy. Oh my gosh. Okay, that wasn't real. Okay, got it. Okay, moving on. I'm You're shook. probably like, what the fuck? Okay, so Brie, this has been so incredible and I feel like I could talk to you for another three and a half hours. You're like, bitch, no. Um... I do want to ask you really quickly. So we have the exact same perspective on marriage. The money thing. Did you sign a prenup, by the way? With my husband? Uh Uh-huh. Hell no. 
ex-husband. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. I'm like, his, let me see your At ID. At this point, who let fucking me, knows? With see. the way the court is set up, he's probably still my husband. Like, I don't even know anymore. That shit takes so long. It I've took heard. forever. <laughs> forever. It takes two seconds to get married, but That's fucking crazy. years to get divorced. And then you can't even, like, I couldn't buy a house. Johnny was like, oh, yeah, you're going to buy a house? And I'd be like, oh, don't play with me right now. Wait, like, you couldn't buy a house? Why? No, because I'm married, so therefore it's his house. Oh, so anything <laughs> you buy is in there. So, like, you know, you can get married oh, and they do get things 50, that are 50. Well, if, you're going, if he wants to, like, he can basically be like, no, I get half. Like, that's the same <gasps> thing women do in divorce, but it's like, you can do things that are like sole and separate property, but you have to do it that way. It just gets messy. So, I basically yeah. was like, I'm just going to wait until Hell this is no. done because I'm not going to play this game. I would sell every Birkin, yeah, every basically. Chanel. By, yeah. by the way, you're, is that a Kelly or a Birkin? Birkin. Mm. So cute. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't. I did like a like several episodes where my Birkin was sitting in the guest in the guest chair it. in the studio. Um, it was really cute. <laughs> <laughs> I would interview her. The I camera. have to see that. I'll come back show and you. Okay, so basically, don't get fucking married. That's terrifying. Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah, just don't. So then you move to Los Angeles. You are like, you know what? I am divorced. And I just want to switch it up and change the trajectory of my life, yeah. basically. I definitely partied for, like, a good six months. Had so much fun. And, like, started to, like, actually have a little bit of a life again. That's what you have to and do. And then, yeah, because being married was just too ooh, was too much work. And then after that, I, I kind of went the opposite. Then I started traveling for, like, a year. And we were everywhere, me oh and my, my best God. friend Chloe and like all my girlfriends, we would just travel every month and I wanted to see as many places as possible. And then I got more into my career and then I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be fucking 30. Like I need to, I need to have a kid. I need to settle down. I need to figure my shit out. Like, and I literally did it all that year. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Something wrong with me. The, Many things. No, actually, I think that's a, a dream. Like, how did you manifest that? I just did. I was just like 30. I'm going to do this. Like, I'm going to party for the next year. I'm going to network. I'm going to figure my shit out. And by 30, I'm literally going to change my life. I'm going to have a baby. Like, this is my plan. <laughs> and I did. And I didn't even really process that I did that until... Looking back, yeah, right? Yeah, until I started looking back and I was like, oh shit, I really did hit it at 30. Because I technically had my son on my... Like, he was born a couple weeks after my 31st birthday. So I was, like, pregnant when I was 30 yeah. and all of that. So it was crazy to think that I it really actually happened the way I wanted it to. That's, I mean, yeah. you got your career, like every single Everything. thing. That's so cool. Do you yeah. believe in uh, manifestation? And 100%. Same. I have vision boards like all in my stuff in my house, like all over. I have different stuff in my room and then in the office. And like I love my that. best friend is like insane about it and the moon and the this and the that. Yeah. So like I feel like we just hear it all day and all the girls I'm around are so supportive in that. So yeah. You're kind of just in it whether you want it to be or not. <laughs> totally. <laughs> just no, pick it up. I'm I have been on that wave since high school. And yeah. it's it's so funny when you were talking about it. You don't really notice it in the moment. Mm -mm. Looking back, you're like, oh shit. Yeah. It's crazy. It is. It really is crazy. How are you thrown into selling Sensa? I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, <laughs> they, uh, I have a little bit of PTSD. Um, you do? They definitely. Why? It was just a lot. I just had a baby. I had no idea how hard this was really going to be. Like, just filming aside was fucking hard. And then having a newborn baby and just not sleeping and working 10, 12-hour days, multiple days a week and breastfeeding. And, like, I didn't want a night nurse because I – I was like, I want to bond with my kid. I'm already leaving you for so many hours during the day. Like, why would I then bring someone in at night? That's, like, Yeah, that makes sense. There was a lot of things that I it was a, a, just new to me. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And being sleep deprived and all of that shit, all while trying not to, you know, cuss out some bitch on my show and just function <laughs> daily and get my body back and remember to eat. Like, it was just, it was crazy. So, so you were pregnant filming the show? No, I was pregnant when... We were in talks. Oh, okay. And they had come, they had actually asked me, I believe it was season two or three. I still can't remember. They asked me a long time ago and I was really, I had just started my divorce. I was really private with everything at that point. I was like, nah, fuck all of this. I just got out of this shit show. Like mm -hmm. I need a break. And they asked me a few times. I was like, no. And then when my pregnancy was announced, I literally was like, okay, well now all of my 
all of my shit's out. <laughs> shit's on the table. <laughs> no, everything's out. Fair so game. fuck it. Here I am. And so I was like, all right, I got nothing to hide anymore. I mean, it is what it is. And so they came to me with it again. And basically my partner was like, this is a great idea. Like, I don't like go on the show. Yeah. Like you might as well. It's right up your alley. It's at least a professional show. It's not like it's like a dating show <laughs> yeah. or something. So you're like, I'm uh, tired. I know. I was like, well, I didn't know I was going to be that tired. My yeah. pregnancy, I was fucking killing it and I was thriving. Okay. Like, and then, yeah, and then it started. So, and then what started the show? Just the show. It was <laughs> just fucking, it. Lord, it was just so hard. It was just yeah. the glam, like getting ready, which sounds so stupid, but like no. having to get ready every day and like outfits and the pressure of all of that. And You're having a new mom. It was just so hard. Even just, probably too much information for most people but like bleeding after having a kid and like you're freaking leaking milk through your shirt and like you're going through all this Hello. shit and you're literally like my body is malfunctioning like and my brain television. is not working I'm on television <laughs> for the whole world to tell me about myself I've chosen to put myself here and then add in Nick on top of it and I was uh -huh. like oh they're gonna fucking rip me apart <laughs> I was like I'm never gonna make it out of here so I didn't I didn't know what to expect and I think postpartum is so real and I didn't know. I, postpartum depression? Yes, sorry, postpartum depression. Like I didn't know it would really fuck you up like that. Like I wow. had no idea. And you think you're fine. You are not fine. And there's wow. like a lot of women that don't want to talk about it and they're embarrassed. They and it's like, I am not embarrassed. <laughs> I was like, someone help me. Where's the Xanax? <laughs> Where's the something? But that's the other thing. You're breastfeeding. You can't even do anything. But you can't take a Xanax? No, you can't even drink wine. Everyone's yelling at you. Stop. Yeah, so you're just crying with milk and just <laughs> there. But you love them so much and it's so beautiful at the of same course. time. So it's like, it was wild. It was a wild ride. So postpartum depression, how long did it last for you? I think it lasted me probably till I was like nine or 10 months. Honestly, right up until I had stopped filming. That was when I would say at the year mark, which he just turned, I'm just now starting to feel like semi-human. Like I kind of. <laughs> You're just such a boss bitch like for sharing that because there's, there's a lot of shame around that. There is. And I hate that because it's like we should be supported. The fact that first of all, I'm a super fucking superhuman. I just created a child and birthed it. And, and that's, it. Like, that's crazy. It's in insane. Itself. It's insane. Yeah. And then like what your body goes through and like finding out like my organs are moving and my ribs are opening and like all this weird Do they move back? Shit. No, I don't think they do. I mean, your organs move back, <laughs> but my ribs, they're still... Not really there yet. My clothes don't fit the same, but you know. My boobs are swelling up. I'm so <laughs> She's like, here they go. I'm like, I literally ask you questions like, yeah. fuck. Yeah. I'd but be on a plane and a baby would cry and my boobs would just start leaking everywhere. So you can look forward to that. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. You are coming to the baby shower. Like, oh, I'll you, be there. Don't you worry. You called it. Yeah, I'll be there with the pump and... <laughs> I'll bring you all kinds of goodies. I like you were right. Yeah, some lactation cookies. Yeah, lactation cookies. What I don't under like. What are those? Just cookies because they help your milk supply. Were did you have to tell the producers like, hey, if you see me leaking? Just oh no, let me they know. would just they would just be like, you're good, just keep going. I know. I was gonna say actually that'd be great for television. Yeah, of course. They're like, no, it's fine. I'm like, my fucking titty is just out here leaking. Yeah. Y'all want you? Nobody wants to see this. I guarantee you. Uh, I think they do though. Well, I think they absolutely maybe only do. fans, but that's probably about it. Uh, it's probably <laughs> probably not television. Postpartum depression. Yeah. I feel like um, it really affects so many fucking women. Yeah. Also, miscarriages. It's And nobody talks about either of these things, and it's either. bizarre to me. I don't understand it. It's so crazy. And you never felt, like, shame around the no. postpartum thing. No, no. I mean, they put me on the shade room for actually being a sarcastic bitch, but I was actually kidding. But, <laughs> it, you know, they were like, oh, she's postpartum and not sleeping and crazy. And I'm like, oh, so you guys took my joke and then tried to shame me instead and insinuate whatever. Like, it's crazy the way that – other women and moms even are doing that to you and it's like really like what do you think that's about I don't I still can't figure that out which is probably why I'm not like a super girls girl because I really don't understand why women act the way that they act <laughs> and I'll be like you thought that was a good idea why like why the fuck was that necessary yeah. so I don't I don't know why women feel like maybe it's insecurity. Maybe it's like. But like, is that even a flex? Oh my God, I had a baby and I didn't have postpartum depression. Ooh. I don't know. Put I don't that know on that. my res. Like, why? Basically. Like, what, what? I don't. 
That's not even cool. Or they'll say shit like, get off the internet, get off whatever. And it's like, okay, yeah, maybe they don't need to be sharing like like vulnerable moments. But at the same time, like people are doing what's helping them in that moment. So be supportive or just keep it moving. Like you don't have to talk crazy to them and be disrespectful and, you know, like start this whole fucking shit show for no reason. Yeah. Like either chime in and be helpful or just fuck all the way off. That's, I always think like that too. I'm not very... I just want to say I am not very vulnerable and open on social media. Very open, hence me (laughs) showing my vagina earlier um, on camera. If I'm feeling like really depressed or something, I think I'll shy away. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I used to be judgmental of women or men that would like get on their Instagram story and like cry and talk about what they were going through. And now that I'm older and I'm not being a dumbass hater, it's like – a, so that helps certain people cope. Yeah. You know, and do what you need to do. Also, B, it's like lucrative as fuck. So, yeah. <laughs> it gets, sure can so be. keep that in fucking mind. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's just like, I don't know why people are so bothered by other people's choices. I, it's very strange to me, but I'm like, okay, that, sure. That's fine. the biggest thing. That's yeah. the biggest takeaway. No one is like going out of their way to speak to you directly. No. Why do you feel so personally? upset yeah it's bizarre damn we've covered a lot of fucking bases <laughs> this yes. episode so are you gonna be on next season i am okay yeah is it did you guys already film it or no yeah we did is was that one a little bit better for you or yeah i think that one was a little better i think <laughs> even just like the time going on with my kid where i actually like maybe slept for an hour or two like really helped i don't know how you did that i don't either I'm a, i turn into a monster oh, I, I don't yeah I, I was just Honestly, I think it's what <laughs> saved me because no one was home when certain people wanted to argue with me. I was like, I'm literally too tired to give a fuck. Say whatever you want to say. I do not care. Like The producer like, Brie, you're sleeping. Yeah. You're sleeping, Brie. Like, do something. <laughs> say something. Like, jump over the table. And I was like, I couldn't if I wanted to. Like, yeah. I'm too tired. So Yeah. So maybe, it, like, work to your advantage. Because yeah. maybe you would have been, like, super over the top and done things you may have regretted. I thought being, like, hormonal and postpartum that that was what was going to happen. <laughs> too tired. Like, I was too tired. So I'm <laughs> thankful because, honestly, I don't really care. So mm-hmm. it was like it worked out good. But, yeah, I don't know. Well, I cannot wait to watch next season. That's when good. does it come out? That they don't tell us. They don't oh, tell they us don't. shit. No. Oh. <laughs> no, they want to so make what, sure So what, you like we... get on Instagram and you're like, oh shit, I guess I'll throw this up on my story. Basically, because they don't want us to fuck it up. They want to make sure that oh. they have, you know. But so, how would you fuck it up? Like go talk about it? Like reveal yeah. something? Yeah. We've had a couple people slip and say some things. Before it came out? Yeah. Are you talking about yourself? Oh, no, not me. Oh, you're looking no, not at me. me. <laughs> not me. I'm the only one that didn't get in trouble. Oh. Yeah. I mean... The girl, and they don't mean to, you know what I mean? Like yeah. naturally you're in conversation your and you just say things. So, totally. and people are good at their jobs. I know what to ask you. They know how to get it out of you. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think it was intentional, but they decided after that, it that slipped. we, we have no more you're, information. I'm surprised they even let you, cause I'm very good friends with a bunch of um, people on Vanderpump Rules uh-huh. while well, Katie and Lala and uh, they had they got to a point where they were like, okay, no more podcasts. Like you guys cannot even oh, go wow. on podcasts anymore. Oh, because because they were divulging too much stuff. Or, yeah, yeah. So I don't think we're allowed to do anything either, and not until it actually airs. So this- or I'm, I might get trouble for this. Who knows? But I also don't care. <laughs> So don't give a fuck. I'm like, okay, so do I have to delete yeah. this? She's like, right just after? kidding. This never happened. No, I think it's just you're, if you're protecting the show, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's all it really matters. They just don't want you to, we don't want to give away all the goods. Of we course. want everyone to tune so in. You'll just tell me after, not exactly. on the microphone. Exactly. <laughs> and I'll leak. I'm totally kidding. Okay, Brie, you are stunning, gorgeous, so smart, and I, you're the best. Thanks. Love you. Thank I you so you. much for coming on. Where can they find you? I'm on Instagram. I'm on this new whatever this fucking threads thing oh is my that God, I can't yes. fucking do. Snap. And I'm obsessed with TikTok. So you can basically find me anywhere. Yes. So I'll be annoying on all platforms. <laughs> I'll be there. Yeah. And it's Brie, B-R-E. Yeah, B-R-E. And last name is T-I-E-S-I. I love that last name. It's hot. Wait, Thank did you. you buy the Birkin? Me. Who's that? What does it say? Girl, you been a fan. <laughs> And Girl, honestly, you've been a fan. this is going to make so much sense when uh-huh. you watch season seven. Oh, my God. That's about, like, the most tea I can give you right there. I love but that. But you are going to look at this. You're going to be like, no. 
Oh my god. So good. Yeah. Okay. So she's special. She was made Very. just for that. Oh, so you got it custom? Mm-hmm. How much was that? A lot. You don't want to say? Mm-hmm. I only have one brick and a guy bought it for me and a Kelly. Mm-hmm. And I'm pissed that I bought the Kelly with my own money. Well, yeah. I mean, we, we want them to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think I'm going to have the next boyfriend, like the next relationship I get into, I'm going to have him buy the Kelly back mm-hmm. from me. Perfect. Wrap it and then give it to me as a present. Well, I think that he should just have to buy you a new one yeah. and then he should also have then to then maybe yes for the other one because I, yeah. I'm pissed that yeah. I spent my own money on it anyways that's just a little <laughs> bit about me I am pregnant <laughs> and no guy is probably gonna want to date me because I sound like a crazy person Brie I love you we already said that <laughs> Sleuth I love you guys so much uh, as always Sophia the Neff Franklin with the Y subscribe me on YouTube is just chef's kiss and i will talk to you guys next week bye